Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Transformation morning. Community Church, Amen. where our vision is to transform the lives of people through the word of God and the love of Christ Amen. everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Just want to thank you for coming out this morning to fellowship with us here at Transformation Community Church. My name is Jason Flowers, and I am the pastor here at Transformation Community Church, and we know you have many places to worship, and we're just thankful and grateful that you decided to drop in and worship here with us at Transformation Community Church. But before I get into the message today, I want to extend a great big shout out to my wife, Renee. Mm -hmm. Today is her birthday. Uh, so those of you that know Renee, please give her a call, a text, an uh, email, just something to let her know that you're thinking about her on this national holiday, which Amen. is May 3rd. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 So thank you once again. Uh, before we get into the word, let us pray. Uh, dear Father, we just thank you for this day, our daily bread. Dear Father, we just thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Dear Father, we just thank you for your forgiveness, dear Father. Dear Father, we just thank you for being for things being as well as they are. Dear Father, we just thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for what you've done for us yesterday, what you're doing for us today, and the promises you have for us tomorrow. Dear Father, we just thank you for being a bridge over troubled waters. Dear Father, we just thank you for being a healer and a deliverer, dear Father. In the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, we just thank you and honor you and lift your name on high. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Dear Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the great I Am, dear Father. And we just lift your name on high. And there is nothing impossible for you. Dear Father, we just stand before you today, just ushering you into our service, dear Father. We just ask that your presence be felt, dear Father. That you would just take a front row seat, dear Father, and just lead and guide us in the path you would have us to go, dear Father. In the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, hide me behind the cross, dear Father, that the word will go forth and be edifying to the souls of your people. Thank you for trusting me with your people, dear Father. In the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, we know that you are a way maker and a deliverer, dear Father. In the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, we know that the blood still reigns, the blood still rules, dear Father. The blood cleanses us, the blood gives us power, and the blood removes us from all iniquity. It is that same blood that reconciled us back to you. In the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, we just ask that this word go forth. Teach us thy ways, O Lord. Let the world see more of you and less of us. Yeah. The world needs to see more of you and less of us. And Father, we just pray that you make the devil our footstool. And Father, keep the devil at bay. Keep the devil at bay. Yes. Keep the devil at bay. Yes. And Father, we know the devil is out to seek, devour, and destroy. So we just ask that you keep the devil at bay. Make the devil our footstool. Yes. And we will forever give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. You ready for a word today? Amen. Amen. You ready for a word today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the word today is going to come out of Nehemiah 4, 7 through 14. So if you could uh, get your Bibles out. Nehemiah 4, 7 through 14. And it reads, But when Sambalot and Tobiah and the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the work was going ahead and the gaps in the wall of Jerusalem were being repaired. They were furious. That means they weren't happy. They were upset. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. Mm -hmm. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. Then the people of Judah began to complain. The workers are getting tired and there is so much rubble to be moved. Mm -hmm. We all never be, we will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. The Jews who live nearby the enemy came and told us again and again. They will come from all directions and attack us. So I placed armed guards behind the lowest parts of the wall in the exposed areas. I stationed the people to stand guard by families armed with swords, spears, and bows. Then, 
as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. Again, he said, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the title of this sermon is Fight For It. How many of you all know that there are some things in life we just have to fight for? Amen. And this, this sermon hopefully will speak specifically to you in your situation that we have to fight for it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So every once in a while, we all reach a point where we just are ready to throw in the towel and give up. Mm -hmm. We're tired, we're frustrated and exhausted and feel like there's no use in continuing to try. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a job, a relationship, health related problems, school, you know, we're trying to lose weight. You know, the list goes on and on. We sometimes just don't see any light at the end of the tunnel and had rather just quit than fight. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there before? Yeah. So let me tell you a story. Many years ago, there was a man in Kentucky who recently retired from the postal service. Mm -hmm. He was sitting on his front porch when his first social security check came and he looked at it and he was just frustrated. He was dumbfounded, he was frustrated. So he thinks to himself, is this all I have to look forward to for the rest of my life? He's put in a long and hard career and now has little to show for it. Was it really worth all of that hard work? So he sat down and made a list. That's the first thing we got to do. We got to sit down and make a list of all of his blessings and the good things he had going for him. Mm -hmm. Included in that list was his mother's famous recipe for fried chicken, which included 11 herbs and spices. Y'all like fried chicken, right? 11 herbs and spices. He was the only one who knew that recipe. So he went to a nearby restaurant and he asked if he could cook the chicken and they said yes. Pretty soon, he, it became the most popular item at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So he soon opened his own restaurant and guess what he called it? He called it Kentucky Fried Chicken and the rest is history. Harlan Sanders was tired and frustrated, but he refused to give up. He refused to quit. Mm -hmm. So here's what we got going on today. There's a, a terrible, a terrible problem, health problem, mm -hmm. running its course through our land, and it's one of the worst illnesses around. Mm -hmm. It's a universal disease, and it's highly contagious. If you're around someone who has it, you can catch it fairly quickly. No, 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 people. I'm not talking about the coronavirus at all. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is a disease called discouragement. Mm -hmm. All of us face the disease called discouragement. Discouragement has been defined as the feelings of despair in the face of obstacles. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Discouragement is defined as the feelings of despair in the face of obstacles. Mm -hmm. It's when you're just tired of giving forth effort and you're ready to call it quits. You're just ready to call it a day. We've all been there before, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So you may even be there right now, mm -hmm. ready to give up on whatever you've been battling with for so long. Mm -hmm. So this reading in the book of Nehemiah is a great story of both causes and cures for discouragement. Mm -hmm. So I want you to be encouraged today. I'm going to give you causes and cures for your discouragement. Mm -hmm. So many years earlier in the history of Israel, the walls of Jerusalem had been destroyed and the people were defenseless and vulnerable to their enemies. Mm -hmm. The great Jewish leader Nehemiah was called by God to lead the people back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls that had been destroyed decades before. Mm -hmm. So before him came Ezra. So Ezra had been successful in rebuilding the temple and now the city needed to be secured. So God sent Nehemiah back to Jerusalem to take control of the task of building the walls. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like an impossible task and the morale of the people were low. Think about it. The morale of the people were low. It's almost like we're facing it today. You know, we got things going on in the world and the morale of the people were low. They were very discouraged and couldn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So as they were rebuilding the walls, 
opposition starts against rebuilding of the wall. So check this out. As they were rebuilding the walls, they were starting to feel good about themselves. Opposition comes ahead. So the walls were built up half the height they needed to be, and then trouble started. So think about this. At first, they were mocked and ridiculed, but after the walls were halfway done, we're not even talking all the way done, we're talking halfway done, the enemy decided to attack and stop the building. So that's where our scripture starts this morning. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. So, we, so the first thing I want you to, to, to think about is, you know, we got to shake the haters off. So you got to shake the haters off. So in, in Nehemiah 4, 7 through 9, it reads, But when Sambalot and Tobiah and the Arabs, the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the wall of Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. They were upset. They were mad. They were jealous. They were envious. Just pick an adjective and they were it. But you got to think about this. It was more than one of them. It was a plethora of them. It was like five of them. Mm -hmm. It was Sambalot, Tobiah, Arabs, Ammonites. It was a, a plethora of them that were against the people of Judah building this wall. Mm -hmm. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. Mm -hmm. But we prayed. Pray. Hallelujah. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. So first off, how many of you all know that everybody's not for you? No. Everybody's not for you. Mm -hmm. Some people are just sitting back waiting on you to fail, and then they'll make their comments. You know, they'll come along and say, I told you so. Mm -hmm. Then there are some who will try to talk you out of your blessing. They'll tell you, no, don't go start that business. No, uh, girl, you know, he's not right. Tell you to leave your husband. Or, you know, guys will say, you know, I wouldn't take that from my wife. That's not anything I would accept. So those are the ones that try and talk you out of your blessing. Mm -hmm. No, that's too big for you. No, that's too grand for you. No, that's too much for you. You can't do it. You just can't do it. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that are trying to talk you out of your blessing. Mm -hmm. And then there's some that are constantly attacking you with their words and their actions. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just constantly at you, at you, verbalized, you know, making, making these accusations, saying bad things about you, coming at you hard. Mm -hmm. You got that group of people. Well, these enemies were furious because they didn't want people of Judah to be successful at rebuilding the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones I call, they don't want you to leave them behind. You know, they don't want you to get too big, get too far out. Right. They, want you, they don't want you to leave them behind. Mm -hmm. but then they also wanted to hold them in poverty. So that's the ones that I call misery loves company. You know, there's some people that just want you to stay down at the bottom, be a bottom dweller with them. So misery loves company. Mm -hmm. So they were on the attack. So what must one do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, take it to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Just like the people of Judah did. Mm -hmm. It says in verse nine, emphatically, but we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. You see, this wise approach to the threat involved both relying on God and also in action, doing what was needed. So we read in Luke 6, 27 through 28, it says, But I say to you here, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And get this, pray for those who abuse you. Amen. Help me somebody. It says, but I say to you who hear. I mean, you got to listen. You got to listen. Love your enemies. That's hard to do sometimes. Do good to those who hate you. Oh, that's really hard to do sometimes. And then bless those who curse you. You mean you want me to bless them if they just curse me, cuss me out? And then pray for those who abuse you. You want me to pray for those who are attacking me, who are after me? Glory to God. So then it says this. While you are praying, you also need to watch. So there's an action. There's something you have to do other than pray. There's something else you have to do, which is an action, which is something that's needed. So in Matthew 26 and 41, it's very clear. It says, keep watch and pray. Watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. How many times you, how many times you often know that 
You, know, you have to watch and pray. You have to see what's going on and pray for that thing. Because if you don't pay attention to what's going on around you, if you don't use your discernment and see what's going on around you, you can get caught up in all of that mess. You can get caught up in all that drama. You can get caught up in all that, that discouragement. You can be caught up in despair. Yeah. But the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. The flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Amen. So tell your neighbor, mm -hmm. keep an eye out. Because haters be hating. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Haters be hating. So let's go on to the second. The second thing I'm going to need for you to do is keep hope alive. Mm -hmm. Keep hope alive. Mm -hmm. Then, as I looked in Nehemiah, Nehemiah 4 and 16, it reads, then as I looked over the situation, I mean, he, took, he had to take a survey. He, he took a, a, a glance at it. He looked over it. He thought about it. Mm -hmm. I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them, so he called a meeting. He called a town hall meeting. He said, hey, hey, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious. Hallelujah. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Keep hope alive. Fight. For your brothers, fight for the things that you want. Fight for the things that are important to you. Fight for those things that you that you hold dear to your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this is where your faith comes into the picture. Mm -hmm. So are you going to run and hide or stand and fight? Mm -hmm. Are you going to break like a twig mm -hmm. or are you going to be planted by streams of water mm -hmm. which shall not be moved? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be planted like a tree mm -hmm. planted by streams of water? which shall not be moved. Are you going to trust in God? Yeah. Or are you going to trust in you? Mm. Are you going to increase your faith? Because this is a faith thing. Yeah. Or are you going to be overtaken by fear? You know, fear and faith can't live together. Right. Are you going to put your hope in the Lord? Or are you going to fall into despair from what you hear others say is going to happen? Mm -hmm. Just know you got to make a choice. You got to pick one. You got to pick something. You have to take action, though. Mm -hmm. No more sitting. No more sitting idle. No more standing by. No more sitting still. And no more sitting around watching other people do the work. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Amen. So you got to do something. Mm -hmm. You got to pick something. Choose something. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the strongest motivation for hope was and still is our great and glorious God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is still sitting on the throne. God is still amazing. Yes. God is still making a way. Yes. God is still going before us. God is still doing it. Yes. God is still doing it. He did it then. Mm -hmm. He's doing it today. And he's going to do it tomorrow. He's the same God yesterday that he was, to, that he is today yes. and forevermore. Mm -hmm. But you got to know the strongest motivation for your hope is our great and glorious God Amen. who has delivered his people from mighty nations before. Mm -hmm. So how many of you know if he did it for Abraham, mm -hmm. he did it for Isaac, mm -hmm. he did it for Jacob, mm -hmm. he can do it for you too. You, Help me somebody. Mm -hmm. So I like how Psalms said it in Psalms 56, uh, 10 through 11, it says, I praise God for what he has promised. Mm -hmm. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. Mm -hmm. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What are you afraid of? Right. I trust in God. Mm -hmm. So why should you be afraid? Right. What can mere mortals do to me? What can man do to me? Right. If you trust in God, if you're leaning into God, if you are putting all your faith in God, if you are uh, rest ruling and abiding in God, mm -hmm. what can man do to you? Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. So tell your neighbor, move out of my way. I'm about to go for it. Move out of my way. I am going for it. Hallelujah. I'm going to fight for what's mine. So then when you're in this fight and you decide, hey, I'm going for it. Uh, you decide I'm going for it. You done shook off the haters. You said, hey, uh, hope. I'm keeping hope alive. So the other thing you want to do, the last thing you want to do is just know that you can't will a thing to happen. You're going to need some help. You can't will a thing to happen. So if you notice in the scripture, 
he called a town hall meeting. He called his people in. He called in the nobles. He called in the priests. He called a town hall meeting. He got help. He brought some people in. So here's what I like. In Deuteronomy 1, 29 through 31, it says, But I said to you, don't be shocked or afraid of them. The Lord your God is going ahead of you. He will fight for you. Just know that the Lord will fight for you just as you saw him do in Egypt. And you saw how the Lord, your God, cared for you. The Lord cares for you. He loves you. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to fail you nor for, or forgive you. He's going to always be there with you. So it says, just as the Lord, your God, cared for you along the way as you travel through the wilderness. So that's a time when we've all been lost and we've all been discouraged. The, discouraged. the Lord was with us. Mm -hmm. Just as a father cares for his child, just like you, those who are parents, you got nieces, nephews, if you're not a parent, you know how you care for a child. Mm -hmm. You love your child. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Now he has brought you to this place. And this place that they're referring to is a place called prosperity. Mm -hmm. You know, they were going to the land of milk and honey. Mm -hmm. That's prosperity. The place that he's trying to take you and I to is a place of prosperity, a place where we can have our milk and honey, a place that we can rest, rule and abide in the Lord. Amen. 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 So, so here's a story I'll tell you. Uh, it's really personal about myself. I'll share with you. Uh, my story is about 18 months ago, about 18 months ago, um, I went to the doctor and the doctor said to me, um, Mr. Flowers, I uh, got some things I want to share with you. Uh, one of me said is, Mr. Flowers, you have high blood pressure. I said, okay. And then he said, Mr. Flowers, you also have high cholesterol. And I said, okay. And he said, Mr. Flowers, um, your sugar is on the rise. So it looked like you're heading towards diabetes. I said, okay. And then the icing on the cake was, Mr. Flowers, uh, you're only operating off of one kidney. Mm -hmm. I said, glory to God, glory to God. But here's the thing, I didn't worry, I didn't fret, mm -hmm. I didn't cry, I didn't pout, mm -hmm. um, because I knew that there's a God that's above all gods, that's above all names. There's a God that's above all names, and that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, don't you worry, don't be discouraged or dismayed. Mm -hmm. He said, it's all working out for your good. Mm -hmm. So then what I did is I went home and I made some changes. I took action, I had to make some changes. I changed my diet start exercising a little more. Uh, so so then, you know, about halfway through this thing, I hit a wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hit a wall and, and I wasn't losing any more weight. I was getting tired. I was fatigued. I was just like the people in Jerusalem. I was just like the people in Jerusalem. I was just like some people that I'm speaking to right now that are tired, frustrated, hit a wall, just don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. So here's what I did. Mm -hmm. I got on my knees and I prayed. I prayed to the Lord Almighty and I said, Lord, yeah. you know, there's only so much I can do on my own. Mm -hmm. There's only so much I can do on my own. So I called on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, greater than he that is in me than he yeah. that is in the world. I called on the Holy Spirit. There's only so much you can do on your own. Mm -hmm. So I said, Holy Spirit, you got to help me. Yeah. You got to help me get over the hump. You got to help me get to the next level. You got to help me take this thing from good to great. Mm -hmm. So don't you know that the Holy Spirit will fight for you? Yeah. You just got to dig deep. The power is in you. When Jesus died and ascended to heaven, he left us with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's inside of you. Mm -hmm. It's inside of you. So the Holy Spirit will initiate the battle. Mm -hmm. He will lead the battle. Mm -hmm. He will fight the battle. Mm -hmm. And he will bring it to a successful conclusion. Right. Help me some Amen. So then I go back to the doctor six months later and uh, I, I, I fought the good fight. I've prayed. I've done all these things. I did exactly what, what, they, what they did here for, the, for Jerusalem to get this wall built back up. And the doctor looks at me and said, man, what have you done? He said, man, your blood pressure is great. Mm -hmm. I said, glory to God. Amen. He said, you, your cholesterol is within range. Yeah. I said, glory to God. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what? Your sugar level is going down. It's within range. Yeah, yeah. I said, hallelujah. Yeah. And then he said, and about that kidney. Yeah. 
Your kidneys are up to 80%. I said, look at God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if he would do it for me, he will do it for you. You just got to dig deep and you have to be encouraged. Greater than he that is in you than he that is in the world. Help me somebody. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't God do it for you? Hallelujah. So my question is, what are you fighting for? What are you fighting for? Are you fighting for your marriage, mm -hmm. a relationship? Mm -hmm. Are you fighting for your family? Mm -hmm. Are you fighting for your children? Are you fighting for physical health? Yeah. Maybe it's spiritual health. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us are, are dead spiritually. Amen? Yeah. Or are you just fighting for peace? You want peace on all sides. The enemy is attacking you on all sides. You want peace on all sides. Mm -hmm. Are you fighting for peace in your mind? Mm -hmm. you, know, you want clarity where there's confusion in your mind. You're fighting for peace in your mm -hmm. mind. Or are you just fighting for peace in your heart? Are you broken hearted? Yeah. Have you been let down? Jesus. Are you fighting for just your heart to be renewed, to be restored? What are you fighting for? Are you fighting for some patience? Mm. Things are just getting on your nerves. You got your, your wits in. You don't know where to go to. You don't know where to turn. Mm. Are you fighting for financial stability? Mm. Your money's looking funny. Amen? Amen? Or are you just fighting for a better way of life? You just want to be better. You just want to be a better Christian. You just want to... Be, live better and living a righteous life for Christ. Amen? Amen. And in the reason in, in Chronicles, it says, Second Chronicles, it says, But as for you, be strong and do not give up. Yeah. As for you, be strong and keep fighting. Don't quit. Do not give up. For your work will be rewarded. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Amen. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. So let's close like this. Mm -hmm. So, so children of God, Paul says it best in Philippians 3, 13 through 14. It says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, <clears throat> forgetting what is behind mm -hmm. and straining towards what is ahead. Mm -hmm. Forgetting what's behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal when the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on toward the goal to win mm -hmm. the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 So God calls us to be active yeah. participants in our future. Mm -hmm. If we want to see his best for our lives, mm -hmm. we've got to fight for it. We yeah. can't give up. Yeah. We've got to fight for it. Yeah. Just because you're faced with discomfort, sometimes it's not. it doesn't feel good doesn't mean that God's not in is that doesn't mean that it's not in God's best plan for your life. Sometimes our best and biggest steps of faith are the hardest. Yeah. Be assured those bold moves of faith are a part of God's best for you. Amen. I want you to be encouraged today. Mm -hmm. I want you to be encouraged today. Yes. I want you to be encouraged. You know that victory is certain. If you trust in the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So give a hand clap for the Lord. Were you blessed on the day? Was it a good word for you today? Were you edified with what the Lord had to say today? Be encouraged. Yes. Do not be discouraged. Yes. Be encouraged and fight for what you want. Hallelujah. 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 We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. So at this time, I like to open the doors of the church. Mm -hmm. My wife and us here at Transformation Community Church are here to receive you with open arms in the love of Christ. Yes. If you need prayer, please call us at 480-524-7080 or just send us an email to Transformation Community Church 1, the number one, at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. We would love to pray for you. Amen. If you want to be saved today, mm -hmm. if this message touched you and you want to be saved today, if you want to have an intimate relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. then you can call us at 480-524-7080 or you can send us an email at transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. It will be our honor Amen. to lead you down the road to Romans, yes. a road that leads to Christ. Yes. If you want to join our church, mm -hmm. we would love to have you. Amen. 
Just call us at 480-524-7080, or you can always email us at transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com. We would love to connect with you. Amen. Lastly, if you would like to support our church yes. um, financially, please send via Cash App to dollar sign transformation AZ, or you can use Venmo, and that is the at sign transformation AZ. And please note, just put uh, Transformation Community Church in the notes section. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We thank you for your financial support. Until next time, people of God, mm -hmm. may the Lord bless and keep you. Yes. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. Mm -hmm. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Just know that I love you and God loves you so much more. Have a most favored week. Amen and amen.